Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have a 19th lecture. Before going to the 19th lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the 18th lecture. In the previous lecture, we have computed the coefficient matrix, how it can be decomposed into multiplication of two matrices L, U. We also have seen what are the instances the matrix could be decomposed and what are the instances the matrix A cannot be decomposed. Right? Now today we are going to have the, the algorithm of LU factorization using Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. The input is a matrix n by n matrix A, a matrix n by n matrix A and the expected output is an upper triangular matrix U, an upper triangular matrix U. The permutation indices which we denote it as RK needed to form the permutation matrix P and the multipliers M I K needed to form the unit lower matrix, unit lower triangular matrix which is ultimately we call it as P A is equal to L into U where P is the permutation matrix and A is the coefficient matrix and L is the lower triangular matrix and U is the upper triangular matrix. So, this algorithm is very very important when you, are when you are trying to solve the solution to the realistic applications. Look at this for i is equal to for k is equal to 1 to etc n minus 1 find the pivot largest element in the matrix find rk so that the absolute value of a k k that is absolute value of a r k comma k it will be equivalent to maximum of k less than or equal to i less than or equal to n a i k maximum of k less than or equal to i less than or equal to n a i k save r k if a r k is equal to 0 otherwise continue interchange the rows r k and k a k j is equal to a r k j where j is equal to 1, 2, etc. J is equal to K, K plus 1 up to N. Form the multipliers 
aik form the multipliers aik that is a of ik will be equivalent to m ik will be equivalent to minus of a ik upon a k k where this a k k is free from zero i is equal to k plus 1 etc n update the entries a i j is equal to a i j plus m i k times of a k j which will be equivalent to a i j plus a i k times of a k j where i is equal to k plus 1 k plus 2 up to n j is equal to k k plus 1 k plus 2 up to n then n so we need to update the entries a i j with each multiplier and at the end we could able to see the upper triangular matrix so u v is now obtained and using the multipliers m i k we could able to get the l and anyway we started with permutation matrix 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and by using the element row operations so we wanted to bring the maximum element as the pivotal element so that will become a matrix p so essentially we will be getting p a is equal to l into u p a is equal to l into u Now it is interesting to see what is the flop count that is flop count is nothing but number of floating points the above algorithm requires about 2n cube by 3 flops the above algorithm requires about 2n cube by 3 flops and uh, big o of n square comparisons the algorithm requires 2n cube by 3 flops and big o of n square comparisons note that the search for the pivot the search for pivot at the kth step requires n minus k comparisons note that the search for the pivot at kth step requires n minus k comparisons the above algorithm does not give the matrices l and p explicitly However, these can be constructed easily as explained above from the multipliers and the permutation indices respectively. Let us apply the algorithm whatever we have spoken for the matrix. 3 by 3 matrix. So for k is equal to 1.
for k is equal to 1 the pivot entry is the pivot entry is 7 right this is the biggest we can bring it as a 1 by 1 element so among these three so this 7 is the biggest note that we are doing Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting so this 7 is sitting over in third row first element so that means a31 I wanted to bring it as a11 so what I do is I will interchange the rows r3 to r1 so the updated matrix will become 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6 and 1, 2, 4, right? So the first step in the Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting is bring the, the element largest in magnitude as the pivotal element. So obviously 7 is bigger than 4 and 1. So bring 7 into A11 position. So to do that, we need to interchange R3 to R1 and vice versa. And what are the multipliers while doing the Gaussian elimination? Look at this. We need to make this entry as 0. That means A21 should be 0 and similarly A31 should be 0. These two should we should make it as a 0. In order to do that, we require a multipliers m21 which is minus 4 upon 7 and m31 which is minus 1 upon 7. So then update the matrix. So you will have the row as it is. And anyway, this has become 0. So when it has become 0, this also changes, this also changes. Similarly, when it is changed to 0, this is changed, this is changed. And this is the matrix A1 after first step. And in this sub matrix, in this matrix, see the bring maximum element as a 2 by 2 pivot. So obviously, 3 by 7 is not greater than 6 by 7. So 6 by 7 will become as a A22. That is 6 by 7. So for that what we need to do is row 2 row 2 should be shifted to row 3 and row 3 shifted to row 2. So in the step k is equal to 2 Pivot element is 2, R2 is 3, so interchange rows R2, R3. So you would get it as 7, 8, 9, this will be as it is. So this is the maximum element in the second row. So bring this element as a 0. So R3 minus something times of R2, so that this would be 0. That means the multiplier is M32 is equal to minus 1 over 2. So this multiplier updates to the matrix A as A of 2, let me call it as 7, 8, 9, 0, 6 by 7, 19 by 7, 0, 0, minus 1 by 2. So this is the matrix. And all these are all zeros. So now essentially in two sets itself you are getting what you call upper triangular matrix. You are getting it as upper triangular matrix. Now by using the multipliers, by using the multipliers you do get as L that is 1, 1, 1, 
minus m31 minus m32 minus m32 m32 m21 so this is anyway one and when you substitute these values you do get a matrix l and what about the permutation matrix so by interchanging the rows so you do get this this as a permutation matrix remember that determinant of p is actually not zero so therefore this is a non singular matrix and similarly this matrix is also a non singular matrix so what is the determinant of this so determinant of this will be 1 minus 0 rest are zeros so this is even a non singular so determinant of l is not equal to 0 determinant of u not equal to 0 and determinant of a not equal to 0 so we could able to find out two non singular matrices l u such that pa is equal to lu and p is the permutation matrix as spoken well now let us look at into the gaussian elimination with complete pivoting what is the benefit of having a gaussian elimination with complete pivoting so why do we need the pivoting pivoting we need to do to refine the solution or whenever it is not possible or the solution is blowing up we wanted to control the solution in order to control the solution we need to have a strategy and one of the strategy is gaussian elimination with partial pivoting which we call it as gepp the one which we did it now occasionally the gaussian elimination with partial pivoting also costlier algorithm and it may not shoot all the models and we do have the remedy for this is we do have gaussian elimination with complete pivoting so what is this algorithm says is in gaussian elimination with complete pivoting at the kth step the search for the pivot is made among all the entries of the sub matrix below the first k minus 1 rows to do that you set a0 is equal to a thus to obtain ak from ak minus 1 k is equal to 1 to etc and do the following gaussian elimination with complete pivoting identify the largest element in magnitude identify the maximum element in magnitude among all the elements of the sub matrix identify the largest element in magnitude among all the elements of the sub matrix obtained by deleting the first k minus 1 rows and first k minus 1 columns so if you remove first k minus 1 rows and k minus 1 columns let it be a r s raised to the power k minus 1 so a r s raised to the power k minus 1 so you will have interchange rows k and r followed by the interchange of columns k and rows r I mean, R is actually changed to S. Apply gas elimination scheme without row interchanges with A R K minus one as the pivot to the sub matrix consisting of K rows through N and columns K through N. so if you apply this algorithm that is gaussian elimination with partial pivoting 
Gauss in elimination with complete pivoting. <coughs> in terms of matrix multiplication, this then means you will have A of k is equivalent to mk times of p of k, a k minus 1 q of k, where m k is an elementary matrix and p is the permutation matrix obtained by interchange rows k and r of the identity matrix. So initially we have an identity matrix. So from the identity matrix we will be getting the permutation matrix by interchanging rows k and r of the identity matrix. Similarly for mat the matrix qk the matrix ak has zeros on the k minus 1th row below the kk entry the matrix mk can of course be computed in two similar instances at the end n minus 1th step At the end of n minus 1 step, the matrix A n minus 1 is an upper triangular matrix. So, factorization is it is actually L u, there is an error over here, P a q is equal to L into u, where P and q are the Permutation matrices. Set A n minus 1 is equal to U upper triangular matrix. Now define Q is equal to Q1, Q2, Q3, K n minus 1, P is equal to P n minus 1, P n minus 2, like that P1. And L is equal to P of pre multiplication M1 minus 1, Mn minus 2, Mn minus 3, M minus 1, comma, P M1 times of P1 times of P2, P3, P4, P5 like this, post multiplication. Then it can be written as PAQ is equal to LU. PAQ is equal to LU, where P and Q are both permutation matrices and L is unit triangular and U is upper triangular. So, by this process, you will be getting non singular matrices P, determinant of P not equal to 0, determinant of Q not equal to 0, and non singular matrix L is equal to determinant not equal to 0. So, U is also not equal to 0. Well, a practical scheme for Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting is remark similar to those in the case of partial pivoting hold, storage space does not have to be wasted by explicitly forming matrices PK qk, pk, ak minus 1, etc., qk, mk, and mk times of pk, a power 
k minus 1 q k it is enough to save the indices and the multipliers here is a practical scheme for complete pivoting here is a practical scheme for complete pivoting which does not show the explicit formation of the matrices p q m m a k and p k a k note that the partial pivoting is just a special case of complete pivoting as we have seen the partial pivoting is just a special case of complete pivoting now let us see the gaussian elimination with complete pivoting what is the input over here input is an n by n matrix a and expected output is an upper triangular matrix u permutation indices rk and sk from which permutation matrices p and q can be formed and the multipliers m i k from which the lower triangular matrix l can be constructed the resulting is p a q is equal to l into u let's see this algorithm for k is equal to 1 to etc n minus 1 do find the pivot indices r k and s k such that mod of a r k s k is maximum of a i j for i j greater than k and save r k and s k so if a r k s k is equal to 0 then stop otherwise continue interchange the rows r k and s and k for k is equal to for u takes values form the multipliers a i k is equal to m i k that is minus of a i k where k i is equal to k plus 1 to m so a k k is free from 0 and update the entries a i j is equal to a i j plus m i k a j and this becomes a i j plus a i k a k j where i is equal to k plus 1 k plus 2 up to n j is equal to k plus 1 comma etc up to n then end note that the above algorithm does not explicit explicitly give the matrices l and p q where l is non singular matrix p is also non singular matrix q is also non singular matrix so but we can perform the matrix l by using multipliers similarly the permutation matrix by indices of the rows and columns of by q so let us do one simple example for the Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting. So we wanted to triangleize the matrix using complete pivoting. See that this is the matrix I have it. So I would be looking at not just bringing in the 0 or 1 1 as look at this among all the entries 3 is the beggar I wanted 3 as 1 1 element. So what I do is pivot element is 3 pivot is 3. So, second row 
and third column. So the pivot element is bigger one. So what I do is interchange R1 and R2 followed by interchange of C1 and C3. So that means what I mean to say is interchange R2 as R3 and C1 as C3. So essentially this element will come as one by one element. So that's what I did over here. 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. From 4 and 5, Gaussian elimination equation relates to. So again in this equation, So this is wanted to be 0, so that means R2 minus 1 over 3 times of R1, R3 minus 1 over 3 times of R1. So these two will be zeros. So for k is equal to 2, the pivot entry is 2 over 3, so R is equal to 3, S is equal to 3. So and interchange rows 2 and 3 followed by interchange of columns 2 and 3. So this is the matrix you do get it. So among these two, this is the bigger element. So this is already in the pivot. Second element. So you will have and perform Gauss elimination taking the entry 2 by 3 as the pivot. So essentially you will be getting this matrix. These are zeros. So essentially this is what is called upper triangular matrix. Now the way which we did it by using the multipliers we can form L and by using the row indices and column indices we can form the P and we can form the Q. So if you look at very carefully what is the flop count? The Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting algorithm requires 2n cube by 3 flops where n is the size. In the previous case it is 3 so 27 into 2 by 3. So that means 90 flop counts. So in general the number of flop this requires is 2n cube by 3 and order of n square comparisons. So after having had this let us quickly summarize Gaussian elimination process. Gaussian elimination is a process which will help us in order to solve a particular system where the decomposition takes place. Gaussian elimination scheme with without pivoting or with partial pivoting and with complete pivoting when carried out to when carried out to completion yield respectively. So when you write this A is equal to L into U, Gaussian elimination without pivoting, P A is equal to L into U, Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. PAQ is equal to LU, Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting. Here L is the unit lower triangular matrix, U is the upper triangular matrix, L is the lower triangular matrix, P are the permutation matrices. Now it is interesting to see the stability of the such an algorithm. Before going to the stability of such an algorithm, let us find a theorem. The computer the computed matrices L and U obtained by Gaussian elimination without pivoting satisfies A plus C is equal to LU. What is the E? E is the error matrix. So that means norm of E is less than or equal to neta times of U, norm of L, norm of U. Since U is equal to A raised to power n minus 1, the stability of Gaussian elimination is a better understand or better understood by measuring the growth of fine elements in the reduced matrix. So note that although pivoting keeps the multipliers bounded by unity, the elements in the reduced matrix still can grow arbitrarily. This is the cause. So to do that what we do is we use what we call a growth factor. Growth factor R is the ratio of the largest element
largest element in magnitude of a a1 a2 a3 an minus 1 to the largest element in magnitude of a so we will write this as rho is equal to maximum of alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha n minus 1 divided by alpha where alpha is maximum of ij mod of aij and alpha k is maximum of ij mod of ak ij now if partial pivot is used then i will have mod of li j is less than or equal to 1 for all i greater than or equal to j since lj are the multipliers and similarly the upper triangle at uij is less than or equal to rho times of maximum of ij aij so that means we can have complete pivoting we can have partial pivoting depending on the growth factor and we can make a conclusion upon the growth factor if but bigger growth factor indicates it's proven to be a unstable smaller ground factor leads to a unsta unstable but the growth factor is normally na namely small So, L of u is equal to A plus E and mod of E alpha is equal less than or equal to N cube times of mu into rho of A alpha. That is the infinity norm. This question therefore may arise how large rho can be? To answer this, we start with a new example. Look at this example A is equal to 0 0.000111. Now, if you use Gaussian elimination without pivoting, this is the matrix you are obtaining over here. And a maximum of first A1JJ is 10 power 4, so maximum of AIJ is 1. So, 10 power 4 by 1, so which is equal to rho, so therefore it is a unstable. Gaussian elimination with the partial pivoting yields A1 is U that is 1 1 so this is the matrix So, for this matrix, maximum of A1ij is 1, maximum of Aij is 1. So, growth factor is 1. So, therefore, it is a stable. In this case, you see the maximum of Aij is 10 power 4, growth factor is 4. So, it becomes a unstable. The question next is how large the growth factor rho in each case can be an, can be for an arbitrary matrix. So we answer the question by using the following result. Growth factor for Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting. For Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting, rho is less than or equal to 2 power n minus 1. That is rho can be as big as 2 power n minus 1. So in the previous case rho is equal to that is 2 power 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3, that is 8. So, for example, if you take this matrix, look at over here, 4 rows, 4 columns. So, if you use this A of 1, so therefore, this is the one which we did it, these are all zeros. And the next step, when you do this, so this will become zeros, zeros, and this is zeros. So that's what you got this upper triangle matrix. So what is the growth factor over here? Rho is equal to 8 by 1 that is 2 cube by 1. So 2 cube can be written as 2 power 4 minus 1.
So what is the remark over here is, note that this is not the only matrix for which rho is equal to 2 power n minus 1. Higam and Higam 1899, Higam and Higam 1989 have identified a set of matrices for which rho is equal to 2 power minus n minus 1. For example, this matrix if you see over here, 4 rows and 4 columns is such a matrix. Right 1993 has identified a matrix arising in solutions of a class of 2 point point value problems which have an exponential growth with collapsal pivoting. So whenever you have a very high level growth, the system will become unstable, which is not a desirable. Also, in 1994 has discovered a class of linear systems arising in solutions of integral equations. That means we can find out these applications in the integral equations and boundary value problems, how the growth factor would influence the system in order to get the stable solution. And similarly for the case of growth factor for Gauss elimination with complete pivoting will be shown like this. So rho is less than or equal to n times r 2 power 1, 3 power 1 by 2 like this. So in the previous case it is suppose 3, 3 into 2 power 1 power 2. So 3 upon 3 times of root 2. So therefore, Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting, Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting, they do influence a lot by using the, we can, one can find out the stability and the stability will give the best approximations by knowing the growth factors. So today we have learned the algorithm for Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting and also Gaussian elimination with complete pivoting and how actually they would be influenced by using the growth factors for a stability of the system in order to get the best approximation. So I am sure you must have learned a nice topic and I would be closing now. So thank you very much for listening to my lecture today. Thank you very much.